So we are back with the sixth episode of the MSNS podcast. My name is Toby Lin. I'm a senior too. Uh, my name is Ryan Lim. I'm a sophomore too. And I am Shane Yoshiyama. I am currently a senior one. Shane, how are you doing, man? Uh, yeah, doing is, how are we doing? That's a, that's a question of the year, isn't it? Um, doing all right. I think all things considered, a little anxious for what lies ahead, but otherwise, uh, you know, doing pretty well. Very fortunate. All right. The first question we ask all our guests is, you know, what made you choose nursing? All right. So what made me choose nursing? Uh, and excuse me if it ends up being a long-winded answer. You know, it's part of the narrative no, of my okay. journey. But um, I had a very strong desire for service in a very sort of open-ended um, and undefined way for um, most of my life. Uh, coming into high school, I thought that sense of service would have been utilized or best put to place or best put to work through the world of civic engagement, like politics. Um, I often saw myself working in um, public service in that regards. Um, but then some internship opportunities that I had in high school working for my, um, you know, hometown city council made me kind of realize that, you know, politics maybe wasn't the best fit for me or maybe it wasn't going to be the most enjoyable or meaningful um, or even impactful way to go about serving my community and serving others. And so I kind of went back to the drawing board and I always had been very influenced and moved by humanitarian aid relief workers, whether it be in Haiti or Japan um, in the sort of late uh, 2000s. And I was really drawn to that. And um, through a little bit of more research and sort of some time I spent doing some uh, work in, you know, World Health Organization mock committees for Model United Nations, I kind of fell in love with the world of healthcare. And then, so yeah, coming into college, I applied for nursing and I was still a little apprehensive about it, didn't really know. But then, you know, like a lot of other people, the more time I spent in the nursing program, the more I got immersed into this world of healthcare, the more passion I became and the more I realized how this was the best modality for me to do the most amount of good. And was there a specific reason why nursing versus other uh, areas of healthcare? Yeah, you know, I think it ultimately came down to that, you know, person to nurse contact and, you know, being um, that emotional and physical support system. And I'm sure a lot of other people have kind of talked about that, but, um, yeah, it's just the fact that, you know, the nursing staff is the glue of the unit. So we're the, we're the point of contact for everything. And I thought that was something that I wanted to be involved with. And is, uh, the, when you were talking about the relief, you know, um, is that like a major reason why you do uh, volunteers around the world? Because I know you do that, with, uh, did it at the Dominican Republic, and Toby, you did that in uh, Vietnam, correct? Uh, I, I was going to go to Vietnam. I, I ended up not going to that trip. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but is that, is that like a big yeah, reason that's Yeah, that was a big reason. So I've been looking for a way to get, you know, involved in the global community a healthcare scene for quite some time. And then I had the opportunity uh, when Sam Kubota reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to be the team leader for the Dominican Republic trip. Um, and so, yeah, that was a really wonderful opportunity for me to sort of live out that, um, you know, that initial dream that I had of being a, you know, humanitarian worker in some regards. I, mm -hmm. I use that a lot more um, reservedly now because it has some certain, you know, neo-imperialistic, um, implications with it so um, but yeah that was kind of the idea that I had going into that and then I also um, you know got involved at USF early on in an immersion program where we worked at a uh, migrant farmer camp out in Salinas California and then we worked in um, some underprivileged or underserved communities um, in the western edition in San Francisco mm -hmm. as well and can you talk a little bit more about maybe really re like what goes into doing that where like whether it's going doing the immersion program or going out to the Dominican Republic like what do you get from that that you can't get from just staying at USF being a nursing student 
Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and I think that's one of the really wonderful things about our university is how it pushes us to push the boundaries of what we can do with our healthcare expertise and healthcare knowledge. Um, and we have so many um, programs at the university that help facilitate that. Um, hence why, you know, a lot of the things that I was able to do were sort of facilitated through the university. Um, I think the most important thing or most important thing that you can gain from these immersion programs is sort of expanding your perspective about um, the different intersections of health. So I think in all the different health immersions that I've had, um, I've come to learn and appreciate um, social determinants of health and all the different things that can go into affecting the outcome of somebody's um, ultimate health and well-being. So whether that be, um, you know, your zip code, your accessibility, your whether geographically to um, affordable, healthy foods that are also fresh, um, your accessibility to social services, your ability to access transportation, um, do you live in an area with good road infrastructure, good water infrastructure? All those things come into play um, with healthcare. And, you know, I think we are seeing that play out right now with the coronavirus. Would that be, um, you know, inner city um, populations that are now facing worse health outcomes when it comes to COVID because um, they have all these comorbidities related to hypertension, diabetes, um, that are a result of the environment that, you know, they have to live in because of structural, um, political and economic, um, issues that have been thwarting their social mobility. That's awesome. And so like in, in relation to these social determinants of health that you're mentioning, you know, for people who ha didn't have the immersion experience that you had for people who may not be as familiar, you know, what advice would you have for, especially us as, you know, future nurses and even other healthcare professionals or just people in general, what advice do you have for people to, tr what can we do in order to try and help impact these um, in the limited scopes that we have? Yeah, it's, uh, it's really difficult. You know, I think a lot of us who come into the nurse program, especially at USF, there's this really strong desire to want to do good immediately. You know, as corny as it is to change the world from here is a very resonant uh, message that, you know, attracts a lot of people for the right reasons, obviously. Um, and it just takes a lot of effort on the individual to go and reach those um, experiences. Um, nobody's going to hand you anything. Um, and but that's with that being said if you just spend like five minutes looking whether that be at usf or here in san francisco you're going to find something that's going to open up um your world of opportunity for um experiences that will give you more perspective about the world of healthcare. all right uh, I need to uh, I need to talk about something like I know Shane you're not going to talk about yourself because you're a humble man but you know president of MSNS you were the president of NSA you were the safety officer officer for rock climbing club you were EMT for EMRS you were a TA like holy shit you know I'm, I'm sure you've done way more and I'm not giving you the justice you deserve but you know you've done a lot thank you can you tell me like why <laughs> or like why um like is that something you kind of came in knowing you wanted to like do or is you kind of just fell into certain things and wanted to pursue it even more honestly why or even how right <laughs> yeah, how? for people yeah. looking in from the outside they're just like, like wow but yeah. you know for like, the guy Jesus. on the inside yeah yeah no that's a good question i uh you know it's funny when people ask me like how do you balance everything and honestly in high school i was more busy you know i i'm a busy body for sure i'm one of those people that i have to constantly be moving to feel like, you know, that I'm doing something good. Mm -hmm. um, if I have free time in my day, it doesn't work out well for me. So, um, yeah, I, it's, it's all about having a curiosity um, to go pursue things, having a curiosity to learn, to grow, um, to start small. And then, you know, one thing that I would say, like to like the freshman orientation panels all the time is, you don't have to be passionate about anything. 
you just have to be curious mm -hmm. and that curiosity is enough to get your foot in the door it's enough to um open up a new door possibilities that you know you otherwise wouldn't have been able to and then it's a you know multiplicative effect you know a lot of the different experiences that i've had are all interconnected to some degree so let's mm -hmm. go through it right um i joined msns as a freshman and victor who's one of our alum was part of emrs and he was a really strong influence on me to go pursue getting my emt license and then eventually getting involved as an emt uh at usf um and then through i also as most other students um i was involved in nsa and then you know starting off at, as a small um eboard position just doing a rep manager thing and then using that opportunity to change it into something a little bit bigger and help grow it and then from there um the eboard the existing eboard saw a lot of potential in me and you know started grooming me to be president um on a kind of early stage and then from there you know all those other opportunities opened up whether that be the ta position i have for dr Papora because i was already so involved it's one of those things like hey you're super involved and you have a lot of perspective would you like to have this job you know so it's the more involved you get the more opportunities that will be presented to you mm -hmm. um and when it comes to sort of balancing everything you know the way I look at it is if it ends up being too much, I just quit, you know, mm -hmm. and very rarely do I quit. That's not really in my character, my personality or my, my tra traits, but, um, you know, if it ends up being too overwhelming, then you could always drop it. There's no shame in trying. Um, and I think, you know, that's best seen at least personally for me with NSA, right? I could have still been NSA president. Um, but I came to, you know, after my software too, I was like, dang, this was a, a lot of work that really, mm -hmm drain me and I don't think this is something that um, I can do long term and there's a lot of other things I want to explore whether that be doing international immersions um, working part-time getting some money um, I was like okay this is something that I'm gonna have to get out of my life and then what that opened up when I quit NSA president was rock climbing club so you know each little you know when one door closes another one opens mm -hmm. as corny as that sounds no yeah like it just yeah because i think from an outside perspective we always kind of see you as someone who just constantly has their shit together and it's just like <laughs> focused at like all times and like peppy all the times but then i think there was one moment where i was like oh shit because it was, it was during like rock climbing club and um i was just you know i saw you i was like, hey what's up how are you doing and then usually you're like this like super happy guys whenever you're on campus or at the meetings at msns you're just like super energized and with it I think there was that one moment where you were just like, dude, I'm tired. Like, I'm over this. And yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, this is a side of Shane I've never seen before. And yeah. I was like, it kind of shows that no matter like how much, how interconnected your, you know, jobs were and like how much you like to be busy, everybody has like a breaking point. Everybody has like a point where like, oh, maybe I need to step down from some of the things that I'm taking on right now. Yeah, and I, I, I don't want to mislead people by stating that, oh, like, I'm able to do everything and it's completely okay. Like you said, there are plenty of days where I'm just like, oh my gosh, I am so burnt out. I am burning the candle at three different ends of the stick. You know, I'm going way too hard. And, you know, in those moments, it's really important to recognize and validate that sense of feeling exhausted or burnt out. And then, um, taking a moment to be, you know, a lazy bum for a little bit, you know, just to veg out for a bit, play some animal crossing, you know? Um, and that's why rock climbing was such a wonderful outlet for me. You know, I I'm glad I was able to replace a more academic pursuit with something that was a little bit more athletic and, um, self-serving and, you know, it was still just as fun and if not more impactful for my growth and development as a person. So, um, yeah, no. Times are tough, especially with uh, doing a lot of things all at once. So yeah, yeah, and I think it's really important to draw that distinction. You know, with turning something down, right? It's not so much that you're really quitting on yourself; you're just giving up an opportunity so that you can have more time for yourself or more time for other things and to open these other opportunities. And so it's really 
I think one, one thing that you do, you've done really well is being honest with yourself of, okay, here's what I'm doing well. I want to continue pursuing that, you know, MSNS president, rock climb, all these other things that you're doing here. And then here's NSA where it's not that you don't like doing it. It's just that you realize that you, you, you kind of being real with yourself, right? Is this something that I can see doing long-term? Is it healthy? And if it's not, then you have to choose to put that aside so that you can, you know, give yourself that opportunity. And then also being honest with yourself of, okay, today's a day I'm handling it well, or today's a day I'm not handling it well. And then finding avenues or routes, you know, ways to kind of deal with that, right? Whether it is a leisure activity, you know, being a lazy bum, or if it's, you know, finding it a healthy athletic outlet, right? But, and it's not that either of these are healthy or unhealthy. It's just finding ways that work for you to be able to do what you do best. Right. Yeah, no, totally. I totally agree. Um, you kind of touched on something with the self-reflection, you know, being able to have a little bit more introspective thought to recognize how something's affecting you. Um, and that takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of maturity and it takes, you know, there's a lot of adults who aren't, aren't able to do that. But um, I think when you're able to do that, you're really opening yourself up to, your fullest potential, you know, ability to succeed as much as a person. And then you're also stepping aside so that somebody else could rise to the occasion mm -hmm. who could be potentially better off in that possession position, whether that be um, they have the time and schedule to be able to facilitate that, or they're, they may be more passionate than you and that's okay. You know, it's okay to not be the like top tier, you know, charismatic guy in your job you know maybe that's just not the right fit for you and then somebody else can slide in and that's a really wonderful opportunity for their growth yeah and i actually want to touch on that now that you bring that up i think that really speaks to the leadership style that you employ and you know to give a little insight for people listening who haven't been able to see firsthand you know kind of the inner eboard workings of shane's you know two-year term you know the way that you managed our eboard and our organization with just msns specifically it wasn't that oh i'm shane i'm the president i'm calling all the shots you know you kind of walked into the room and you would kind of the the same respect that you gave to us you you demand back but you put so much into each person right believing that whoever's in that position that's the person that's best fit for the job in that moment and allowing them to do whatever they felt was best. Right? I remember so many times where I'd be like, hey, Shane, you know, here's kind of where I'm saying. And then so you, instead of, you know, being like, oh, we should just do this. You just ask me, what do you want to do? Right. And I'm sure you've done, you've done that with pretty much every other position. You're the membership chair. How do you want to improve membership? And I think the reason for that too, is these are the people that this is their role and they've been invested in it as the president, your job isn't to micromanage everybody and make sure everybody's doing what you want. It's more of, do they feel supported? And because they know the position so well, do they have the tools they need to succeed? And then, so you kind of step in there, if someone needs help or connecting them to the right people, but ultimately, you know, you're allowing the best person for the job to do that. And so I think that's important too, to recognize when maybe you might not be the best fit and allowing someone else to kind of slide in there and do what Definitely. they need to do. Yeah, the two things. So the first has to be go with professional development that you're talking about, right? So putting somebody in in a spot and just trusting that they'll be able to run with it and um, take the reins for that position. And I think that sort of style of management um, ends up being the learning curve in the beginning is always really rough, mm -hmm. right? Because you're trusting somebody to be like, all right, I'm going to need you to become an expert in your position to best serve our community. So I'm going to be here for you, but I need you to work through the growing pains and become an expert for this position and become passionate for it. And then once you achieve that, then it's cake work, you know, like it's mm -hmm. so easy just to sort of take a step back and let somebody who knows the position really well to just take it to its fullest potential. Um, so ultimately, you know, it ends up being, you know, a better investment, not just for my own, you know, time and sort of sanity, but for everyone else as well, because you're getting somebody who's really passionate in that position. Um, and then the second point, which now I'm blanking on, uh, is totally okay. 
I'll get back to it later. <laughs> I'll, remember, I'll remember it. And uh, so you've done a lot for MSN as, as a whole. Uh, under your leadership, you know, the club has thrived and it's definitely increased in numbers. When you first started out at like in the board, whether as like the VP or like even like as the president, did you imagine the club being where it is now? Yeah, I knew I knew I could get MSNS to where it is now. Uh, when yeah. we started off, when it was at like two or three people for <laughs> Sunday afternoon um, general meeting, um, I knew I could if I got in charge, I was able to take it to where it is now. I remember very specifically, so our membership chair, Jeffy, um, I remember he went to the first meeting with me and then he just walked away. He's like, man, that was lame. This is bad. <laughs> and then he turns to me, he's like, hey, if you're president, I'll join again. I'm like, all right, bet. Like, hey. that lit- and that literally <laughs> happened too. Yeah. And as soon as I became president, I texted him out, or I messaged him on Facebook. Like, hey, Jeffy, sorry. I'm president now. You got to join. <laughs> and then after that, he ended up becoming, you know, joining on the eboard team as well. And, you know, was probably the most important eboard member we had this last year. Um, he really helped develop um, our organization, whether it be with our merch and sort of setting up the mentorship program or revitalizing our mentorship program. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he did a really great job with that. But, yeah, I knew I could change it because there was no infrastructure and, um I knew that just a little bit of infrastructure would have with the organization hierarchy and, um, you know, set up, it was, we could have done it. And I was very thankful and grateful that I had, um, McKevin, um, who was one of the presidents before me kind of have that vision as well. So he laid out a lot of like the roadwork for me to follow through and sort of, um, carry out. Um, and he was a very involved person as well on campus. So he had a lot of experience from other organizations that he applied, um, into MSNS. Like he was the one that implemented the points policy for our organization, which established a sense of accountability and it established a sense of ownership within MSNS. So, um, once we were able to get that, then yeah, the, the numbers were, were going to follow as soon as we set it up, but obviously it had to you know, have a group of very passionate people and a lot of curious people to sort of fill through and um, get the rest of the organization filled out. And I think a lot of that curiosity and passion kind of stems from how we approach them when they're incoming freshmen. I remember when you were talking in the very beginning about doing the panel for incoming freshmen. I, I remember like specifically freshman one, seeing you up there, I was like, oh, damn. This guy he's cool he's cool <laughs> and then so why do you feel like it's important we do that for the incoming freshmen why is it important that we kind of go out there and engage with them rather than just letting them hope for the best and come to us yeah no it's it's definitely it's part of like the pageantry right like you're having a very young person moving on from one chapter to their life into the very next chapter of their life of adulthood you know uh very much in ways where middle school is the transition period from childhood to adolescence. Um, you know, college is the transition from, you know, adolescence to adulthood. And so we have to cultivate a culture, not just our organization, but the school of nursing and the university has to cultivate a culture to celebrate, you know, that change because it's scary. It's, um, you know, insecurity inducing and we just have have to welcome everybody in and let them know that there are communities that are eagerly awaiting for them and we're going to come up to you and say hi and we're going to you know give you you know a big hug and welcome you in so well uh yeah it's you gotta reach out and um, make people feel special and validated and uh, that's something that I always uh, had fun with, especially with the freshman orientation weekends. And that's why I did go team um, last summer, just so I could, uh, you know, reinforce that spirit. Mm -hmm. And I think that really goes back to when you talked about laying the foundation, right? I think that's something a lot of people don't know is just how much work went into MSNS over the years as it's changed from, you know, just the different forms that the organization has taken up with McKevin really working hard to lay that framework for us to transition to where we are now. And this isn't something that just, you know, happens overnight. It's not the work of one person. It's the work of 
so many people, you know, multiple e-boards, multiple members, people really putting their blood, sweat and tears into growing the organization to where it is now. Yeah. And I, I just think that's super cool. It's, you know, really with the two of you really having that vision and that vision was shared with, you know, everybody else, the people were really working hard on it saying, Hey, this is what we want to achieve. And here's where we can see things going and everybody really buying into that, that mission. And then it's all just a process, right? And MSNS isn't done. This is just the starting point. It's strong now. It's much bigger than before, but who knows where it's going to go in the future. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what the next group, um does with it it's a uh, it's a little weird not to be you know actively uh in charge anymore of an organization so you know i'm definitely the post-grad transition is going to be interesting so i'm going to have to be uh, a, a follower now which is going to be a new role adjustment and be fun and um, i'm excited so to see what you guys do um so you know rj and michael they're going to be president and vice president mm -hmm. uh did you kind of I don't know if it's like, did you kind of expect that or did you like, kind of, like early on when they were freshmen or sophomores, did you kind of see in them some like some potential of them yeah. being the e board positions they are now? So I'll start with RJ and sort of what I recognize in him and how it sort of, you know, allowed or enabled me to see the potential in him. So um, he was early on involved in MSNS. I think for his cohort, he was definitely. Um, one of the more involved people, um, whether it be coming to the meetings or asking to talk to upperclassmen, things like that. Um, and he had a lot of mentors that were doing the Kasamahan MSNS, you know, dual pairing. So he had that sort of infrastructure in place for him. Yeah. And just like slowly over time, he just like asked, he kept asking, you know, what can I do? How can I improve as a leader? You know, how can I get more involved? And, you know, over time, people just come to recognize that as being, you know, this guy is the one who's supposed to be up next. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I definitely reached out to him when it came to e-board nomination time. He's like, hey, this is something you should pursue. And I, I know you want to do it. So um, I think you should seek it out. Now, when it came to Michael, kind of the same thing, you know, very similar, had a lot of uh, mentors, whether he sought out a lot of mentors and we could, maybe that's another topic we could talk about is seeking out mentorship. Um, but that's, you know, he did a really good job of picking the brains of upperclassmen, whether that be in our meetings, in the library, things like that. Um, and it, his sister's also in the nursing program. And so he had a little familiarity with how things worked. So um, yeah, same thing applies to him. And like on the topic, like you were talking about mentorship, I think that's one of the most important things that MSNS, I think, offers because, and like seeking it out. Because I know that in terms of MSNS, it's always going to be there. We're always going to have the upperclassmen and the veterans, experienced people that are going to be there that want to help. But I think it is partially the responsibility of the incoming freshmen to kind of try to seek it out and try to see what's in store for them in the nursing program. Yeah, no, it definitely necessitates if you want to gain insight into the whatever world you're entering into or sort of modality that you're trying to, you know, flesh out a little bit more, um, you need to take the initiative to show interest and show curiosity. Um, you know, nobody's going to want to take you under your wing if you don't show a genuine interest in something. Um, yeah, exactly. So it, it definitely necessitates a little bit more independent sort of groundwork and sort of getting those um, relationships built. But it's also really important for the mentor to be receptive and open. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be, it's, it's a fine balance between all those things, right? We talked about how it's really important to reach out to incoming freshmen. But after that initial reach out, the invitation has been sent. Mm -hmm. So the invitation has been sent and now it's on the responsibility of that underclassman to sort of take that opportunity and go with it. Then once they reach back out to that upperclassman or that um, mentor, whether it be somebody who is already in the field, then it comes down to that mentor carving out space in their schedule and their life to be able to take on somebody and be able to be like, hey, like whenever something pops up for me, I'm going to let you know about it and I'm going to include you in it or I'll give you a little info session on what you need 
um, advice on. And so it's that um, back and forth play and um, collaboration that's really important. And I think um, the beauty of the mentorship program and doing the internships for the eboards, I feel like that's like a huge part of how we're able to not only kind of motivate our mem like no, not only motivate our members to kind of seek out new opportunities, mm -hmm. but it's also kind of emphasizes the idea of community. Like I've said this before, where any nursing student, I, it's possible like to survive nursing school alone. Like I'm sure it's been done, it's doable, but I think in order to thrive and kind of find a passion for something beyond the, each other and for ourselves, you kind yeah. of have to seek out those opportunities that your community is kind of bringing to you. No, definitely. Um it's it's really important to have people behind you in your corner and that's why i'm so grateful for msns and i'm so grateful for the other nursing communities that i'm a part of here at usf um, because it really makes the whole experience that much more fun and it's not always just going to be about nursing right mm -hmm. and yeah think about all the different um social and cultural engagements that you're able to open your world up to whether that be a Hawaiian ensemble, rock climbing club, uh, Kasamaha, like there's so many go team. There's so many different avenues that um, I know our members um, are co-currently a part of and only further strengthen their engagement because they have somebody else um, in MSNS that they can relate to about it. And it just um, having people in your corner just validates your own path in a way and it makes it a little bit more enjoyable when you have somebody to share it with. And something I've been curious about, like I, this is like changing topics, but um, so yes, you were, you know, you were the president of MSNS and you were the president of NSA at one point. And, you know, as someone who has been at the top of the two major nursing organizations on campus, what makes MSNS different other than, you know, got more guys, obviously. Um, I think the thing with MSNS that makes it unique or special is it's genuineness like there's even though i talked a little bit about infrastructure um we do keep it very open-ended and very free-flowing so it gives people the opportunity to, to do with the organization as they seek fit um and yeah i when it, when it comes to the the relationships you develop it's a very authentic sort of organic way of creating um, relationships, right? We don't have, even though we have a mentorship program, it's not necessarily like a super structured one. It's mm -hmm. very open-ended with kind of like some very minimum baseline requirements, but we give people the opportunity to seek out any mentors that they want. You know, you're not limited to just the mentor that you're assigned. If you're interested in a position, go ask them, pick their brain, um, or just talk to them after the meeting. So we you know, I like to think that I have a lot of mentees because people are just curious and want to reach out and learn. So that's something I'm really proud of about MSNS. And then, yeah, like I said, mentioned before, it's sort of like you pick your own path with how you want your MSNS experience, right? Because of our point system, we say, all right, you can get points in social events, academic, uh, alumni, um, community service. You do whatever you want as long as you get our five points. And you can mm -hmm. do that all in social, you can do that all in academic, but Ultimately, we're giving people the freedom to say, hey, you can use this community to have whatever nursing or college experience you want to have. Um, and I think that's a very empowering thing to have. Mm -hmm. And this community, like, or I don't know, Toby and Shay, like, what do you feel like is the biggest thing that you kind of advertise to people, especially at the club fair? when you're, you know, incoming freshman, everybody's trying to see what they want to do. Cause I know that, you know, you know, obviously some uh, girls are hesitant about joining the male student nursing society. I know that like some guys that are actually also hesitant too. What is something you kind of emphasize during those quick interactions with the freshmen that you want to say to kind of draw them into the club? Yeah. Um, you know, I always say, whether it be at the you know, involvement fair or the freshman orientation panel, we're a community um, of, you know, well-rounded, uh, mindful people who want to make the college nursing experience a little bit easier. Um, and we 
want to facilitate a community that helps promote um, having fun um, in this academic journey. And so I think by keeping that joy and levity, um, we're able to provide a space for people to really thrive. Yeah, I think you really touched on the key component of MSNS that, at least for me, when I talk to people about MSNS, that's definitely what I bring up most is MSNS is an organization and it's a space, right? MSNS, I think the, the framework that we've really worked hard to lay down is MSNS is what you make of it. So whatever you put in, you're getting out. And there's so many different opportunities that you have to really cultivate your own personal MSNS experience. Like I think no one has, no two people really have the same experience because depending on who you reach out, what events you go to, how you stay involved, whether you're, you know, an active member or an e-board, or maybe you're not able to be as active, but MSNS is just there as your support, you know, your own experience is unique to you. And so all MSNS is, is just a platform for you to be able to do that. I 100% agree on that. It's a platform. And I think that's the best way we could look at it. We're not the building, we're the platform. Mm -hmm. And then it's up Wait, to you to lay those bricks, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes, 100%. Wait, Toby, how much time do we have? Um, we have about three minutes left on this, but we can keep it going on a separate one after. All right. Before we go to like, if we want to go to a separate one or end it, I just want to, you know, thank Shane. Obviously, you know, this won't be the last time we're hearing of you. Definitely. Like I'm going to bring you back for alumni night. You best believe that. All right. Sounds I just good. like, you know, I think a lot of us, because you have so many mentees and like people in the organization that kind of, you already, well, in a way, I feel like you already know how much like you mean to us, but can you talk about like some of the lasting things that of like the mentees and everybody in the organization, what has it all mean to you? Yeah, geez. Um, it's one of those things that maybe I haven't really had the opportunity to like properly truly reflect on yet, or even find a way to articulate my emotions regarding that. Um, I think the situation has really stagnated or thwarted a lot of ability to have this sort of like you know golden hour uh you know senior we'll bring it back we'll and, bring uh, it. yeah no 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 for sure but there's a uh, this whole situation is making it really tough to really truly sit down and appreciate um the relationships you built and it's also one of those things that i'm still kind of denying that all this is happening like it <laughs> doesn't really feel weird yeah. like or real like i still feel like i'm going to come back to usf at some point but i know that i'm not um so i am still finding the way to show my appreciation or articulate my appreciation but you know I, it's it's the little moments in between whether it be going to get volcano curry or begging a freshman for flexi money like there's <laughs> um there's Taking a lot of different of things where yeah definitely for sure um you know, I miss being able to talk about, you know, my journey and then how it intersects with other people's journeys and then what we can do to, you know, help each other along that road or path. And uh, yeah, I'm going to miss it. And I appreciate all the relationships that I built for sure. All right. So that's a good place to leave this one.